Oh, my pug. Hey guys, today we're going to do another video on the lasso tool. Uh, we did one before and I'm going to leave a link right up here and if you click on it you're going to be able to go to that that tool of course if this is a download you're not going to be able to go to it you just go to uh, either download it or go to my YouTube channel but today we're going to work and uh, hopefully we can add to the knowledge that you have on the lasso tool so uh, I'm going to show you some shortcuts with the keyboard and uh, we'll get started so we have the lasso tool my keyboard shortcut is the L I just click on the L on the keyboard and I can make just a basic free-flowing lasso tool shape of course as you saw in the last one we also had the polygonal tool where it kind of holds a point and then you can make a shape just like that well maybe we want to use both of them at the same time so in order to do that I'm going to go back to my original lasso tool, just like that. And we're going to use the Alt Option button on my Mac. Okay, so first off, I'm going to hold down my Alt Option button. And as I do, I can still make a free flowing shape. But what I can do with this now also is still holding my Alt Option button. I'm going to lift up on my pin and notice the change that happens. It becomes that polygonal tool. And now I can move it around and it's kept that. Now I'm not even touching the board. I'm not touching the uh, the monitor. I'm just moving it around but as soon as I come down and I touch the board, the monitor, it does again. It grabs another spot. Touch and I lift up. Touch and I lift up. But if I touch and then I hold down it quickly switches back to the original lasso tool. And if I let go of my Alt Option button and I lift up, it connects everything just like that. So one more time, I'm going to grab my Alt Option button, hold it down, still holding it, lift up on my pin, becomes the polygonal. Now I'm going to hold down on my monitor, lift up on both, and then it connects. So just like that. Of course. Uh, there's the additional adding on to this or subtracting from the from the shape like we did with the other uh, in the other video but in this one we're going to be switching back and forth uh, with the regular lasso tool and the polygonal tool okay so then what I'm going to do and this is where it kind of gets a little bit tricky and you have to like anything else you're going to have to practice this even I'm not used to it yet uh, but I'm going to try to get used to it a little bit as I go um, so I'm going to add to this selection and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to first press shift and you'll see an addition sign on my on my lasso tool right there. So I hit my shift button, I'm going to set my pin down. Now as soon as I set my pin down, I'm also going to hit my option key. So I'm holding shift and option. And I can make my selection lift up on both and it's added to it, right? But what if I want to do uh, the polygonal tool and the lasso tool kind of putting it together at the same time. So once again, I'm going to hit my shift, push my pin down, then I'm going to hit my alt option key. I'm going to add to it here, but what if I lift up, now I go into that polygonal tool, lift up on everything, and then it's put that in. So once again, shift, touch monitor, option, I can lift up, have my polygonal tool, hold it down, go back to the lasso tool, lift up on everything, and it's added to it. Well, what if I want to subtract from it? So with the subtraction, the way it works is this. I'm going to hit my Alt key, my Alt Option key, and my minus sign comes up. So normally, I just have that and it takes that away but we want to be able to switch back and forth with the polygonal tool. So I'm going to hit my Alt Option key, put it down, but then I'm going to tap it again. Now I'm going to be able to get my polygonal tool. So once again, taking it away, hit the key, touch, hit the key again, 
I lift up and I can take it away. Hit the key, down, I have my lasso tool, hit the key again, and now I'm able to lift up. Step on everything and it takes it away. So those are kind of a little bit tricky, but it gives you a chance to be able to, to, to add and take away and switching with the regular lasso tool and the polygonal tool without having to go back and forth uh, into your tool palette. Next thing I want to talk about is uh, feathering. So I'm going to just go back to my regular lasso tool and I'm not going to talk about the polygonal tool right here. Uh, but you can use the feathering with this also. If you look up in here on the left left top, you'll see feather. And what this will do is, if I put it to zero, now just make my selection, I'm gonna hit V, and I'm gonna be able to remove this. You'll see if we move in really close, this is a really solid line, really hard edge. Right in there like that. What the feather does, oops, go back to my lasso tool, the feather does is if I add let's say 20 to it, 20 pixels, let's do this first, add 20 pixels on my feather, then I make my selection, hit V so I can cut it, and now what you'll see is, see how it's kind of soften to the edge right in there i'll deselect so you can kind of see it but the, it softens the edge and that's what the feathering does okay okay another thing that uh we can do l for lasso make my selection now i want to go up here at the top to select now we have a lot of other options that we can kind of play with right here so uh your what we were just doing, the feathering, we can go to modify. No, nope, let's not go to modify. Refine edge. Here we go. Refine edge. And you'll notice it brings up this right here. And then you can kind of play with uh, different options. There's your feather. And watch, we can even move this back and forth. And you can get whatever you want right in there. Contrast. Shift Edge, these are all items that you can just kind of play with, okay? I just hit Cancel so it goes back to that. Another place where the Refine Edge is, is right here automatically, right there, and it brings up that palette again. So, once again, it's either here, or you can go to Select, go to uh, Refine Edge, and it brings that up. Uh, another option, go to Select, Transform Selection, Maybe we want to mess with the size of our selection a little bit. We can even move, move the whole thing. So transform selection. I hit enter and they just uh, set it down where it needs to be. Um, select. Let's go to uh, color range. If we go to color range, it's going to bring up another another little uh, option box. This fuzziness, it will kind of let you um, get more of the exact uh, color that you want. So if I move it here, and I'm going to select on this white where the uh, where the lettering is. And I hit OK. Watch what it does. It automatically selected. It took away my circle, and then it selected that color that I uh, selected. If I I'm gonna hit control option, control option or command option Z, and I went back. Let's try this again. If I go to select, and I go to color range, this time let's do the gray. What you'll see is when I hit OK, it will select all the gray area and not the white area. Just like so. So you can see it kind of cuts out the whites right in there. So that's something you can play with. Uh, something that I mess with quite often is, let's take these away. If 
let's make, let's say I'm wanting to do some shading on uh, my little pug dog's uh, arm right here. So I'm going to go to L for lasso. I'm going to come right down here and I'm just going to follow his arm. Maybe I'll just make that selection right around his arm just like that. Okay. Now I'm just going to grab uh, a soft brush. Oops. Actually, I have to get on the right layer, huh? So I'm going to grab a soft brush. And... If I want to shade inside, and we'll zoom in a little bit so we can see it. If I want to shade inside, that lasso tool lets me shade inside. Okay, But if I want to do the inverse, what if I want to do the outside and not this inside? There's a shortcut to that, which is Shift-Command-I, and then it automatically selects everything else. So now you can see that it's selected everything around the outside. And then, I can do my shading right here on the outside and no matter what it won't go into the inside of there. So if we go back a little bit, let's go ahead and trash that, make another layer. Uh, so those are your shortcuts for the uh, inverse. So shift command I, that's your shortcut. If you want to know where it is on here. We're going to go up to select, and right here is your inverse. So you hit inverse, it selects everything. If you want to go back to it, select, hit inverse again, and it goes back to the original selection. So one more thing about the lasso tool that uh, is really handy. Let's say, let's grab kind of a rough brush here. Uh, Dry brush for that. Nope. Nope. We'll use this one just for fun. Okay, let's say you have a rough, a rough outline right in here. Well, you, let's say you also take your lasso tool, I just selected lasso, and I go in here, but maybe I make a couple mistakes and it doesn't quite get exactly where I'm going. Maybe it's, there's a few little spots that aren't very good, just like that. So if I ended up painting it, I end up painting the inside of here. If I can get my paint bucket real quick. You'll notice there's some, let me change the, I actually had that to feathering, so let's take that off real quick. Um, L, so I didn't switch my feathering back, zero, because I want it to be hard. And now I'm gonna go up here And maybe I make a few little mistakes as I'm coming around here. Of course, with this being so easy, you could always go back and do one of these and select it. But let's say it's a much larger image and you just want to get it done all quick. Um, I can go up here, I hit this, and you can see all my little mistakes where it doesn't quite cover underneath there, right? And I want it to, I want it to be all inside without any spots, okay? Any spots left. So what I'm gonna do is, with my selection, I'm gonna go select, I'm gonna go to modify, and then I'm gonna go to expand. And here's where I can, you're actually gonna be taking this line and pushing it outward. And let's say I'll choose five pixels. And you can see it actually moved it out. If I wanted to do it again, select, modify, Expand. Let's do seven more. And it shot it right back out. And then if I go into my paint can, you can see it shoved it up inside of it. Basically up underneath it. So you can do the expand like that. You can also you can also do 
the inverse of expand, which is contract. So just to, you wouldn't normally do it like this, but let's just so you can see how it works. I'm gonna put 20 in there. Okay, and it brings it down. Let me do it again. Select, modify, contract. Let's put 50 so it's even more obvious and it contracts all the way down. So that's a really good one to use um, whenever you wanna to try to fix some, fix some issues trying to get your painting up underneath uh, your line work without having to go everywhere to do it. Um, another way to do this is maybe my magic wand. I select and you see with my magic wand it just goes up to where it kind of feels that there has been a line made and this is where you're where it would come in handy if I add another layer up underneath it I go to select modify expand I'm gonna add let's go with 8 add 8 and it shoots it out and then maybe that's good enough for me maybe not all depends on what you want how you want your painting to be looking so that's it for the lasso tool uh, at least this time around maybe we'll do another one see what else we can get into but hopefully you guys will subscribe hope you guys like this please like the video if you did if you don't hey dislike it and tell me why uh, let me know thanks for watching <laughs>